Blood, and let's sing Power in the Blood, hymn number 294. Well, it's been a week since uh, I've seen you most. I've seen most of you. I know there are things that may happen in your life, maybe nice or beautiful or maybe sad or with difficulty. I know we have church members that are in the hospital right now. I happened to talk to Mr. Alan Stosky last night. Well, actually, he called me. An update, I said, since I'm going to be in the pulpit to today, would you mind if I mention or share what what he had just told me, and he says, for sure. An update on him, of course, if you know Alan Stosky, Hannah's father, um, his surgery went well. Unfortunately, he had, five days later, he had a ma major complication. He started having bloody discharge again, so they rushed him to the hospital, and they opened him up again, and now, uh, he's still in the hospital to, until Tuesday, and they're wanting him to go to a big rehab facility for continuous monitoring of his wounds. So he's asking for prayer. I know he's going to so much difficulty. Like our Sabbath school lesson today, we should be like Mount Zion, a Mount Zion that cannot be moved, whether difficulty like this arises or whether you find yourself at the bottom. And I know some people here might have some special requests for prayer. If you have that in your heart or in your mind, just please raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. At this moment, I would like to invite the members and the visitors, if you could, kneel down with me for a short prayer. Thank you. Our Father, we ask that you would bless this Sabbath day for us, O Lord, and sanctify our time together. 
May our songs and prayers rise as sweet incense before you, filling the air with the fragrance of your presence. Strengthen our faith, deepen our understanding, and renew our spirits as we come before you in humble worship. We lift up our joys and concerns to you, knowing that you hear our prayers and hold our hearts in your loving heart. Guide us, protect us, and inspire us we seek to walk in your ways and share your love with others. May your healing touch bring comfort to the sick and to strength of those in need. We trust in your divine guidance and surrender our ourselves to your will, knowing that you work all things for our good. Grant us the courage to face our challenges with faith and the wisdom to discern your purpose in all circumstances. In your mercy and compassion, O Lord, hear our prayers and uphold us in your grace. May your presence be source of comfort, hope, and peace to all who call upon your name. We look our trust in you, knowing that you are our rock and redeemer. We lift up these prayers to you, O God, with grateful hearts and unwavering faith. May yours will be done in our lives, and may our love continue to shine brightly in our, in our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I like to see that most of you were, have knelt because uh, I promised to God as long as I could kneel, he would allow me to walk. So uh, that's my. We have a short video. Last week we saw a video but in Spanish, but today we're going to show a video. It's all about walk of faith, encounter event, but this time it will be in English. So we're going to show a, see a very brief video at this time. Es un elixir eterno que da vida. So at the beginning, when the world was without form and void. March 28th at the Walk of Faith. 
guess that's it. It's really brief, huh? It's going to be held at the Spanish Church off the Dairy Road. So, now at this time, we are here to to uh, collect some offering for the church budget and also our tithe. As we sow seeds of generosity and stewardship, may we trust God's provision and guidance. Let us give with cheerful hearts, knowing that our gifts will be used to further the kingdom of God and make a difference in the lives of those around us. Thank you for your ongoing support and dedication to our church. Children's story. Oh, children's story. That's what I meant. I didn't follow the, uh, I should have. Well, Missy Haynes, is, he, is she here? Oh, there's Missy. Come on up, Missy. Today is Missy's turn for children's story. She always brings good story. Hi guys, today's story is about a lady named Amanda and her husband Omar, and they had both been married before and had kids from their first marriages, so it was a combined family, and they were a little bit older, so before they got married, they had the kid talk. When you get older and decide to get married, you'll have the kid talk. Do we want kids or do we not want kids? So they decided they didn't want kids because they already had had some. They were a little bit older, okay? So Amanda had to go, she had to fly from Texas to Massachusetts for work for like a week or so. Left uh, Omar and the kids at home, you know, and anyway, so while she was out there in Massachusetts, she, she had started thinking, for some reason she kept dreaming about babies. I don't know, it happens. And she texted her husband, and she said, I don't know, I'm, I keep having these dreams about babies. And she thought, he's going to say, no way. And he called her, and he said, I've kind of been thinking the same thing. Maybe we should re-talk about having a baby or not. So they hang up. He calls her the next morning, and he said, I had another dream about a baby. And if we have a girl, if we decide and we have a girl, we should name it Rosalind. And she said, I'm not really fond of that name, but okay, I'll call, I'll call her Rosie if we decide to have a baby. So they kind of laughed about it. They hung up. A couple days later, she's getting ready to fly home, and she'd been praying to God, show us what to do. We don't know if we should be having a, another baby or not. So anyway, she gets on the plane. The plane's full. If you've ever been on an airplane, it's not so much fun. They cram you in there, and she's in the middle seat, 
seat next to her and the aisle is empty and here comes this lady. She throws a diaper bag down. She hops in the seat with this little toddler, cute little, little kid, just like you guys. Probably not as cute as you guys, but you know. And so Amanda says, oh, she's so precious. What's her name? Guess what her name was? Rosie. So she felt that was a sign. And about a year later, they had their own little Rosie. So if you, if you have decisions to make, and you'll have more as you get older, don't forget, talk to God about your decisions. He will lead the way, I am telling you. He will always lead the way. Don't forget that. You're thinking right now, I don't have any decisions to make. Mom and Dad, make them all for me, but you will have to make some. Does anybody want to pray? I knew you would. That's my girl. Can we give, can we give him a chance to pray? Okay. Would you like to pray? I give God great everything and all I give him. I love him so much. Amen. Hold on, we have two more that want to pray. Okay. Jesus, let us have a good day today. So make bad choices and make brain choices. And let everybody have a good day and good night. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Missy. We all have to make good choices, right? Now, it's time for the adults. Since I already told you my spiel earlier, it's all about the church budget. Without church budget, this church will not function somehow. The money that we collect today, will, the loose offerings, or any special offering will be gone for the church budget. And of course, the tithe belongs to God. I would invite the Deacons to come up forward. Let's bow our heads. Amazing Father, we just thank you so much for so much blessings that you have given to us. Today, we learned that in our Sabbath school, that people who trust you, that you will not withhold anything, especially even in times of trouble. Lord, you know that this world is so much in trouble at this time, and we pray that you will continue, that we will continue to be faithful to you, faithful even to the returning of our tithe. In Jesus' name, amen.
We will, we will have a first time women quartet for our special music. Then after that, the pastor will preach. Thank you. singing, I have decided to follow Jesus. Happy Sabbath, church. Wasn't that a beautiful, beautiful special music? Praise God. One of the blessings of being in Florida is the fact that people come this place, especially winter time, 
and uh, we have visitors just about every week, uh, guests from different places. Today is not an exception. I'll mention at least four. There might be more. Um, Kinder and Stephanie Torsell, Boca Raton, attending for the first time. Are you here? Yes, indeed. Please stand up, and we are so very happy you've come to visit us today. Very, very happy Sabbath, and you, be you belong to the Moritja SDA Church. Yes. Fabiana Jonatas Ubiali from Brazil. Are you here? Yes, all the way back there. Welcome. So happy you're here. You are both Seventh-day Adventist and, uh, um, well, now you live in, in Melbourne, Vieira. So we are thrilled you here. You're here. We are happy you're worshiping with us. And we hope that today will be an extra blessing to you. Anybody else that happens to be here for the first time did not have a chance to fill out a form? If it's you, please stand up. I think that's about it. All right, thank you. I know it's been announced. I know you've heard it last week and uh, most likely you got one of these invitations last Sabbath but just in case you did not um, a week from tomorrow there will be a friends and family picnic from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. and it's gonna be a beautiful time to invite friends to invite people that you know, to invite people that most likely would not go to a church, but will feel much better in a different environment. Um, this is the time you can invite those people. Max K. Rhodes Park Community Center Pavilion, and you get the address, et cetera, et cetera. There will be several activities that um, will be there for us. and. The uh, most important thing is to get to know uh, each other and to share who we are in and out of the church. My wife is good at keeping track of dates birthdays, anniversaries. She has them all. Um, and she's the one who, who tells me and lets me know because I, I, don't, I don't remember and I don't have them on my calendar, to be honest. But yesterday she said, guess whose birthday is tomorrow? I said, mm, many people, but I don't remember. And then she said, one in particular that is very close to us. It's our family. It's our nephew. I said, oh boy, you're talking about Matthew. And, and Matthew, where are you? Here you are. Matthew's birthday is today. So congratulations, Matthew. <laughs> hey, many, many blessings to you. Uh, my wife and I were talking about this, and I confirmed with Matthew this morning. Uh, remember five years ago when he, when he preached for the first time? Uh, he, was, he was smaller. Uh, he was younger. Uh, but he preached with power about faith. And we even have that, uh, that recording. Yes, we do. Um, Anybody else? If it's your birthday today, let us know. All right.
We are starting a new series today. And the title for the series is Holy Spirit. Today's topic, Bring Glory to Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for allowing us to bring glory to Jesus. Today we start a new series. We need wisdom. We need direction. We need understanding. And once we have that, we want to share the good news with others who still do not know you. In Jesus' name, amen. So the series today, it's on the Holy Spirit. My pastoral experience has taught me several things. But I found that people often feel confused about who the Holy Spirit is. And even more confused about what He does. So we'll seek to clear up some confusion. But beyond this, I want us all to see how the Holy Spirit brings us spiritual life. It's important we understand that. And we'll try to answer some questions about the Holy Spirit. Some of the questions that we'll try to answer throughout the series is, who is the Holy Spirit? We'll try to answer that today. What does the Holy Spirit do? We'll try to answer that one again today. But then in the future, we'll answer uh, questions like, how can we discern where the Spirit is at work and where it is not? What does it mean to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? What does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? So the first question today is, who is he? Who is the Holy Spirit? And I'm going to answer that question with a very short paragraph. Then we're going to try to explain. Here it is. The Holy Spirit is a what? Person, not a force or an it. Did you get that? The Holy Spirit is a what? Person. Why do I emphasize this? Because in so many people's minds... Uh, <laughs> Is the idea that the Holy Spirit is a force, um, nothing else. Matter of fact, many Christians even believe that. All right? But Jesus is very emphatic on this point. In John chapter 14 through 16, Jesus is telling the disciples about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And I want us to read John chapter 16 and verse 13, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into what? All the truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. Did you notice the constant use of personal pronouns here? At least six times. Did you notice that? It says he. It doesn't say it. The Spirit is a he. Because the Holy Spirit is a person. Now we see this illustrated in the Bible. Matter of fact, I'm going to be using the Bible. And the Bible alone today. Uh, I could use 
the Czar of Ages, page 671. First time Ellen G. White mentions the Holy Spirit as, as, as the third person of the Trinity. But I won't use that today. We'll use the Bible. In the book of Acts, chapter 5, remember Ananias and Sapphira? You remember that story? You do. Okay. They'll, they tell a lie. Okay. And Peter, after they've lied, Peter comes to them and, and said, You've lied against who? Against the Holy Spirit. That's what he says. Now, you cannot lie to an impersonal force like um, lying to a tornado. Can you do that? Hurricane? No. Flawed? Can you lie to a flawed? No. Not really. You can only lie to a person. All right? Likewise, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 30, the first part, it says, Do not, what? Grieve the Holy Spirit. Grieving only makes sense when talking about a person. You cannot grieve electricity. You cannot grieve wine. There is a Christian author, R.C. Sproul, and he summarizes this saying the following. The Holy Spirit is set forth as a person whom we may either please or offend, who can love and be loved, and with whom we can have personal fellowship. You say amen? So church, those watching online, I plead with you, never refer to the Holy Spirit as an it. The Holy Spirit is a person. But secondly, not just that the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is God. Not a lesser deity than the Father or the Son. This is important. To understand this, let me take a couple of minutes. So we can walk us through what the Bible teaches about God. The Bible says... Back in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, the Bible says that God is one, right? Are you with me? Okay. God is one. Unlike Hinduism or Greek mytho mythology, they believe in many gods. But the Bible teaches that there is only one God. But the Bible also teaches that this one God exists in how many persons? Three persons. Three persons who are all one God. And the three persons are the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are all one God. So let me just say this clearly. The Father is God. The Son is as much God as the Father is. Do you say amen? The Holy Spirit is as much God as the Father and the Son are. One is not more than the other. They're all equally God. When Ananias and Sapphira lie, 
Peter says, you have lied to the Holy Spirit. But then, but then he says this, you have not lied to men, but to, referring to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I'd like to add something else to it. Although the three are equally the one God, they are they're not the same as each other. What? Mm -mm. They're not the same as each other. Each one is unique as a person from the others. Understanding that? Although the Father is God, He's a unique person and He's not the Son. The Father is not the Son or the Holy Spirit. Although the Son is God, He is a unique person and He's not the Father or the Holy Spirit. Although the Holy Spirit is God, He is not the same as the Father or the Son. He is unique. So the Bible teaches that there is one God who exists eternally in three equal but distinct persons. That's why when you are baptized, you are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay? You know, Christians have coined the term Trinity. You've heard this term before. Trinity. It's not in the Bible. Okay? But it's a shorthand to describe what the Bible teaches about God, God's oneness. But at the same time, it's not just God oneness, but threeness. One God, three persons. And of course, we're not going to be talking about the Trinity today. We're talking about who? Holy Spirit. But I just wanted to, to, to give you the background so we can keep on and we understand exactly who the Holy Spirit is. Okay? To answer the question again, who is this Holy Spirit? We first say that the Holy Spirit is a person, not a force. And secondly, we said that the Holy Spirit is God, not a lesser God than the Father or the Son. But there is another question that I'd like to, <clears throat> I'd like to answer today. What does the Holy Spirit do? And I know you did not come prepared to answer the question, but if you have any answer, can you give it to us? Comforter. Yes. What else? Yes. Teach. Guide. Boy, great answers. You know, you're, you're, you're really into it because you've read the Bible, and I like that. I love that. Now, let me just say this. All of you answered the right thing. I was still hoping one of you would say something that I want to emphasize. Yes. Conviction. Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, boy. I'm just going to have to say it myself. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit does a lot of things. Let's be honest. He does so many beautiful, great things. That's, that's, that's the truth. Okay? But I want us to see that there is one primary work of the Holy Spirit that kind of permeates all his other works. 
It's like the leaves and the branches of a tree all come out of one trunk. And there is one work of the Spirit that branches out into everything He does. And I'd like to mention it today. Let's read again John chapter 16, verse 13. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. So the Holy Spirit will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. In other words, he will not draw attention to himself. He will draw attention only to what he hears. And the Spirit then is not out to promote himself in the first place. So who or what does he draw attention to? Okay. You got it. Let's read it. Verse 14. He will glorify me. For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Who's talking here? Jesus. He will glorify who? Jesus. Jesus. Glorify. According to the Seventh-day Adventist. Bible Commentary, Volume 5, page 1048. Glorify refers to a revelation of the majesty and glory of the risen Christ. But it also refers to the beauty and importance of Jesus. So the Spirit is not out to show you His, ma his majesty or His beauty or His importance. No. Rather, the Holy Spirit takes everything about Jesus and makes it known to us. Are you getting the idea here? In other words, it is the Holy Spirit's joy not to draw attention to himself, not to draw attention to his own glory, but to make known to us the beauty, the glory, and the importance of Jesus Christ as Savior. He will glorify me, said Jesus. The Spirit reveals Jesus. In short, I put it this way. When he comes to the Holy Spirit, he makes Jesus real to us. The primary work of the Holy Spirit is to shine the spotlight on Jesus Christ. We see the same thing one chapter earlier, chapter 15 and verse 26. I'm going to come this side now. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about. Again, who's talking here? Jesus. So the Spirit is not telling people about himself. He points away from himself. He bears witness about Jesus Christ. So this, the Spirit's message to us is something like this. Look at Jesus and see his glory. Listen to him and hear his word. Go to him and have life. Get to know him and taste his gift of joy and peace. So...
answering the work of the Holy Spirit, I would say the primary work of the Holy Spirit is to shine the spotlight on Jesus. All right now, and the rest of the time that we have together, I want to draw out the difference it makes when you understand, when we understand, that the Spirit's primary role is to shine that spotlight on Christ. Before we become Christians, Jesus is just a historical figure. Could be a great prophet. Could be somewhere you've heard of. Could be a good teacher, even a good rabbi, a great person. I don't know. Before you become Christian, Christ is all of that. Okay? But becoming a Christian means that there has to be a difference. And you get to know Jesus as a personal Savior in your life. When you became a Christian, and I don't know what your experience was, but when you became a Christian, you called out to him in prayer. And you said, Jesus, Christ, Lord, Savior, Redeemer, whatever you want to call it. You call out to him and you say, help me, save me. And when you call out to him... Let me tell you, it was the work of the Holy Spirit in your heart and your mind to get to that point. I'll tell you why. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3, No one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Huh. This explains all of our Christian experiences as well. Let's say you're listening to a sermon. And that particular sermon, it's talking about the love of God through Jesus Christ. And you suddenly find your heart impressed. And at the end of a sermon, you go and see the pastor. You go see the preacher. And you tell that pastor, you know what? I always knew about God's love for me in Jesus Christ. But today, it has struck me in a new way. I really want to surrender my life to Jesus. What's going on here? What's happening here? It's the Holy Spirit at work in the hearts of people. That's what it is. You know, Romans chapter, chapter 5, verse 5 says, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Amen? So you can see then that the Holy Spirit is at work everywhere. I'll say this. Every time you feel convicted of sin, that is the Holy Spirit at work. Every single time your heart is moved to worship God, that is the Holy Spirit at work. So knowing that the Holy Spirit's primary role is to shine the spotlight on Jesus, that enables us to understand our experiences. Of Jesus. On the stage of human history, God has been working out the greatest history ever told. And God the Father gave the lead role, role to God the Son, Jesus Christ. 
And God the Holy Spirit shines the spotlight on Jesus. And we, we, we watch this, and we've read it so many times. If you've read, you read the great controversy, if you've read the desire of ages, if you've read the Bible, especially the book of John, you'll see this. You'll see that there is such a, such a beautiful story, story about salvation. But, 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 but you've got to watch how it goes, because the drama unfolds as Jesus the, the Savior is born. And then not only is he born, but, but he, he grows up and then he teaches people and he dies for our sins. And then he is resurrected and then he is exalted to the right hand of God the Father. And as, as we see him rise, we just get up from our seats in thunderous applause for all Jesus has done for us because we recognize that Jesus is indeed my personal Savior. Interestingly enough, when you see that stage of human history and we just give the glory to Jesus Christ... Do not think for a moment, do not think that for a moment that the Holy Spirit is, is up in the walkway sulking or in a bad mood or grumpy because of the lack of attention that he is getting. No. I imagine, I believe according to what the Bible says. And the spirit of prophecy, I believe that the Holy Spirit is shouting and cheering. And he keeps calling out, look at Jesus, isn't he glorious? That's what he does. Being today the introduction for this series, there is one last thing I want to touch bases with you. Very important. Knowing that the Spirit's primary role is to shine the spotlight on Christ will enable you and I, us, to discern people's claims about the Holy Spirit. Did you get that? Hey, listen, be realistic. If you've been a Christian for a while, for several years, uh, most likely you've come across people making big claims about the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Is that true? Oh, yeah, I've heard it many times. And knowing the Spirit's primary role of spotlighting Christ will enable you to... Be discerning about these claims. I'll say something. A spirit-filled preacher or spirit-filled Christian is not someone who talks about the Holy Spirit all the time. What? Pastor, are you contradicting yourself? No, I don't think so. Matter of fact, I'll say it again so you can memorize it. A spirit-filled preacher or a spirit-filled Christian is not someone who talks about the Holy Spirit all the time. Did you get that? A spirit-filled preacher or spirit-filled Christian is someone who is always talking about what God has done to us through Jesus Christ. If you are not sure what to think of a preacher or a church or someone's claim that they may have experienced the Holy Spirit, ask questions like this. I'll just give you three questions. You, you can get your own questions. But I'll just give you three. First question, is Jesus being exalted? Okay. Second question. Are sinners turning to Jesus for salvation? And the third question, 
Are Christians being conformed to the image of Jesus? Church, when Christ is front and center, there you have the Holy Spirit. Knowing that the Holy Spirit's primary role is to shine the spotlight on Christ enables us to discern people's claims about the Holy Spirit. But I'd like to make a balancing statement here now. And this is a balancing statement because there is always... A mistake when we talk about the Holy Spirit and we try to put ourselves in a pedestal or in a better position than others. Okay? And I don't want anybody thinking that Pastor David is saying that Pentecostals or charismatic churches are wrong, are wrong, and I am right. No, that's not what I'm saying, and that's not what I'm going to say. But it's important that we take the Bible and we understand the role of the Holy Spirit. Okay? As simple as that. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, I see at least two different groups among Christians. How many groups? Two. The first group is what I call the charismatic churches or Pentecostal churches. Okay? And I'm going to make some very large generalizations about this church is. They're always talking about the Holy Spirit. Have you noticed that? Yep. They emphasize the need to encounter the power of God through the Holy Spirit. They emphasize the place of experience and emotion. And they criticize churches that they feel are too Paying too much attention on doctrine. They call it head knowledge. So that's the first group. But there is a second group. By the way, this is a picture of a Seventh-day Adventist church. <laughs> Not kidding, it is. The second group includes many of the more conservative Baptists, Mennonites, Anglicans, and maybe Seventh-day Adventist churches. So let me make some large generalizations about this group. This second group says that we need to watch out for that first group. Because the first group is kind of flaky, emotion-driven. Have you heard that? Oh, yeah. Not grounded in truth. This group downplays experience and emotion and emphasizes the importance of right doctrine and solid teaching. Church. I like to suggest that there are great dangers in both groups. And I'll just mention it. The first group needs to hear that the Holy Spirit never contradicts God's Word. Amen? That's the first group. They need to hear that. The Holy Spirit never contradicts God's 
word. The Holy Spirit inspired the Bible and Jesus calls him the spirit of truth. The first group needs to be careful not to base truth on experience, but to rather base it on the Spirit-filled Word of God. Did you get that? Now, the second group needs to hear that the Spirit enables us to experience God. Hmm. It's not just about getting doctrine right. If Pentecostals and Charismatic tend to overstate the place of experience and emotion, then the second group, including Seventh-day Adventists many times, can easily tend to think that being a Christian means just knowing all the right doctrines. But church, there has to be an experiential side to our Christianity. The Holy Spirit enables us to cry out, Ava, Father. That is experiential language. Jesus says the Spirit gives us a new birth. Doesn't the Bible say that? Yep. Now, you know a baby is alive because the baby expresses her or himself all the time. If your Christianity is just head knowledge without any experiential love for God, then it may be simply that your religion is not really in touch with Christ. I'll give you an example. The Pharisees were religious. Very much so. Very much doctrinal oriented. They knew it all. Let me go a little bit deeper. Demons have very good doctrinal knowledge. Yet, neither the Pharisees nor demons are born again of the Holy Spirit. So you see, it's not a choice between experience and doctrine. No, it's not. I believe it is both. Matter of fact, our doctrines, our doctrines always, always have to lead us into heartfelt worship. Do you say amen to that? When we go deeper into understanding the doctrines of of the Bible, understanding what God is and who God is in our lives and what Christ has done, the Spirit inflames our hearts with experiential knowledge of God. It's not just head knowledge. No, we express our knowledge as well. And yes, at times, it means that expressing emotion in private worship or in pu public worship, it's perfectly fine. I know that most of us here are, have come from conservative backgrounds. Most of us. Our ethnic heritage is kind of restrained. And we somehow feel that reverence for God means standing perfectly still. Don't even move your head. And it can certainly mean 
worship for you. But I believe that worshiping God goes beyond that point. I believe that worshiping God is filled with joy and celebration. You say amen to that? The Bible calls us to shout for joy to the Lord, to raise our hands in prayer and worship. Well, think about this. How is it that we jump and shout when our favorite sports team wins, but when we sing about Jesus' defeating sin and death and Satan, we are hardly engaged at all? Church, I know some of you are just about to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> kind of worry, Pastor, change. Pastor's leading this church into emotionalism. Listen to me. Emotionalism is a danger, but I don't think it's a danger for this church. At this point, I think our great danger is just going through motions. Becoming like the Pharisees who had all the right head knowledge, but no heart to worship the true God. Melbourne Seventh-day Adventist Church. Online viewers. As we go deep into the truth of the Bible. I'd like you to pray. That the Holy Spirit will somehow inflame our hearts in such a way that joy and worship be real at all times. Let's please stand and let's sing To God Be the Glory, because after that, we're going to sing this song. <laughs> um, that's hymn number 341.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your presence. Reading the Bible, searching the scriptures brings new light every day to our lives. We just started talking about a new series, the Holy Spirit, and we've heard so much about the Holy Spirit. Do we know that much about the Holy Spirit? Allow us to experience once and for all the true meaning of being baptized by the Spirit. We consider ourselves in group number two. And sometimes we have the tendency to believe that because we belong to group number two, we got it. They do not. Help us, Lord, to embrace doctrine and experience so that happiness in Jesus will be real. Amen. Amen.